The Profit Constructors presents Construction Junction, the junction between accounting and construction. Please welcome our host, Tanya Schulte. Hey, Tanya Schulte here, your host for the Construction Junction podcast. Welcome back to this new episode. Uh, super excited to have you joining us today. Something that um, has been a, a big part of the career that I've had in this industry has been credit and collections. And that's just because it, there's no way to avoid it often in this industry. Um, we're entering into contracts and agreements um, where we're either going to do progress billing or we're billing for supplies and materials being supplied. Um, you know, throughout my career, I've worked in various aspects of the industry. I used to work for some um, uh, scaffolding companies, concrete forming insuring companies, where we were renting equipment out. Um, and again, everything is going to be invoiced. You're going to have open accounts receivable, right? So credit and collections has been a huge portion of the work that I have in, uh, engaged in. Uh, tried to help our clients understand better um, and gone down the road of like some preventative measures. So we often have, have our clients set up um, processes and procedures for making sure that you are placing the right things into place when it comes to uh, preliminary notices if they're required in your state, um, which would be like for, for lien processing, um, making sure that you have uh, the right lien measures in place, whatever those may be. So we've always been uh, very much involved in helping our clients with that aspect of things and including all the way up to helping them understand, uh, you know, we, we'll often in our monthly meetings with clients be reviewing accounts receivable and asking clients, do you really think that this debt is able to be collected? Is this accurate? You know, we want you to have the most accurate information on your books as possible. And if you have debt that's sitting out in your AR for a number of years, um, that's not helpful for you in determining the health of your business. And it's not going to look great when you're going to talk to lenders or potential purchasers of your business, all kinds of reasons why we really month over month are helping you assess that and accurately decide and determine what's collectible and what's not collectible. Have you reached out to the client? Um, are, have they made promise to pay? All those kinds of things. So credit and collections is something that we uh, do dip our, our toes into. Um, and as you'll see when we go to talk to our guest today, it's something that we definitely do not do. We're not licensed to be collectors, but we do help you understand when collections becomes necessary. Um, and it's something that I think is very important for the industry as a whole to really um, understand, to have good policies and procedures in place around, um, and for you to be aware of um, what that looks like. I know that one of the things when, when we're helping our clients at the Profit Constructors run with the big dogs, which is our tagline, um, in that case, when we are talking to them about what are the measures that are necessary for you to really take your sort of smaller business or maybe your mid-sized business and move it up market, move up to the next level of growth, um, this is one of the bigger pieces that you really have to think about. What is our policy? What are our procedures? Is everyone in the office on the same page and understanding of those policies and procedures around credit and collections. So if you can't tell, today we're gonna to be talking about credit. Um, I'm bringing in a really good friend of mine who uh, does this work across the country and is very good at it, very uh, open, honest, and transparent about uh, expectations and how the process should roll. And let's hear what he has to say about um, credit collections and how that process can go. And we'll be right back after this short break. Hey, are you an accountant or bookkeeper in deep on the construction industry niche? Or maybe you're just thinking about throwing your hat in the ring. We here at Construction Junction also host a roundtable over at Roundtable Labs, just for construction types like you. This isn't a workshop or seminar. Instead, we dive deep into the issues faced in this niche and the firms that serve them. We tackle topics together by crowdsourcing our experiences and areas of expertise. We also support each other when things get tough. Think of it as a cross between a mastermind and support group for financial types that you didn't know you needed. So if you're looking to build better construction clients as you build a better accounting business, give us a try. One welcome back for this segment of the Construction Junction podcast. I am, as I said, super excited to have Sven Nelson uh, with C2C, Re C2C Resources. Did I say that correctly, Sven? Yeah, you got it. 
Yes, today you're the guy that you're the guy that gets you paid. So I want to dive in right on that. Like, what does that mean? The guy that gets you paid? Well, I mean, as you know, uh, most businesses do business on credit these days. They extend terms, and uh, sometimes you have issues where people don't want to pay you, um, either because they can't, they don't want to, or there's some sort of a dispute. So um, I I do commercial collections in the business to business uh, world. Perfect. That makes a lot of sense. Tell us a little bit more um, about you, sort of your other business ventures, and uh, how did you get to where you are? What kind of led you to this point? Wow. Uh, so uh, ironically, I started out as a chef, went to school to be a chef, um, realized very quickly that I didn't have any nights, weekends, or any time with my family, so I needed to do something else and uh, stumbled across the collections industry about 18 years ago and never looked back. Um, since then, I've started a real estate company where I do uh, real estate investing uh, with my kids, um, teaching them all about real estate investing. We have some long-term rentals. We do some flips, um, some owner finance stuff. And then uh, this past November, I just started a company called Ivy Consulting. We do business consulting, lending for businesses, uh, short and long-term lines of credit. We have a credit card processing product. Um, really, uh, we kind of run the gamut with things. I call us a cash preservation uh, vehicle. We try to help companies preserve cash through different partners that we have through Ivy Consulting there. So. That makes a lot of sense. And especially in this industry that this podcast is specifically created for in that sort of construction, both on the uh, trades and sub side and more also even on the material supplier side, that is so necessary, that cash preservation piece, as you put it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we actually have an e-payables program through Ivy Consulting as well, where we can actually turn somebody's uh, payables department into a profit center. Um, so it's a pretty, pretty cool product. Um, we have a, um, a, a drug prescription drug program, specialty drug program, all those are things that we can help to, to preserve cash. And then obviously the big thing is, is the finance, uh, piece of it where we can help folks, uh, who are, you know, needing capital. Yeah. We, so one of the things that we are often, um, trying to help and coach and advise our clients through is, you know, if you do, you know, our tagline is we help you run with the big dogs at the profit constructor. So if you do want to go out there and do work for larger general contractors, for larger owners and developers, if you're a GC, um, you have to be prepared with capital and cash is king. So cash preservation, that just like, you just, you preach into the choir over here. <laughs> yeah. Well, hopefully we can help them find some of their lost cash with our collection services uh, through CTC as well, which I know a lot of these folks get into situations where people aren't paying them. So, yeah, actually, so let's speak more to that. You and I met at um, a level set event, um, which was all about credit and collections and the management of that kind of stuff. Um, and so that was one of the things that we first began chatting about is, you know, all of the years that you and I both have spent seeing how hard it can be sometimes to do these B2B collections. One of the things I brought up to you there, we have a lot of clients that do work for, um, you know, multifamily housing. So the property managers are kind of coming and going, they're constantly changing hands and then everyone's pointing fingers. Like how do you kind of step in as C2C and help folks that are needing to do that credit collections? What's, what's your main role there? Yeah, so uh, obviously you get to a point with somebody where you've exhausted your in-house efforts, you've written all the letters, you've made all the phone calls, they're still not paying you. Um, and sometimes you just need a third party to come in and do something you know, a little different, right? Einstein's definition of insanity is to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. And many businesses find their credit department in that same uh, cycle, if you will, right? Just continuing to make phone calls and reaching out and, and not getting a response. So when we get involved as a third party, we do a full financial liability and assets investigation on the companies that owe them money. Uh, we want to try to figure out why are they not paying? Is it because they're unable? Are they unwilling? Is there some underlying dispute that we're not aware of? And what it does is it actually gives us a roadmap, if you will, as to which direction we need to head down so that we can hopefully motivate them to pay our clients the way they should be. Uh, we do have the ability to go all the way through to suit if we need to. Um, what's great about us or different about us rather is that, you know, we don't use our legal department as a profit center. Uh, we don't raise your contingency rate. We don't charge a legal management fee. We simply pa pass any court costs or filing fees along to the customer without any markup. 
Um, you know, I think that the justice system can be used to collect money, but it's really not set up to collect money. It's set up to dispense justice. And a lot of people think that, you know, hey, I've got this bad debt. Let me go to my corporate attorney. Well, I'm going to tell you a secret. Most corporate attorneys absolutely hate collecting on bad debt is their least favorite thing to do. So you're better off hiring an expert like us uh, to get involved, get our hands dirty, try to motivate these people to pay. And then if we need to, we can use the justice system at the end to enforce any type of payment that we need to, such as garnishments and things of that nature. That makes a lot of sense. And I love that you view that as sort of the last resort, right? Like let's let's use some other creative ways to get folks to pay before we just send it off to court. 100%. I mean, we've got over 40,000 clients that we've done business with here at C2C. Uh, we've collected over $450 million in bad debt um, since 2002. And um, I'll tell you that less than 2% of our cases actually go through to the justice system. Um, it's because you know, like I said earlier, the justice system really isn't set up to dispense justice. And a lot of times, if we identify that we know that this customer, yeah, it's easy for us to get a judgment, but it's unlikely to pay because of that. Maybe there's history with past judgments that haven't been paid or tax liens that are out there. Then that's the last thing I want to tell my client is, hey, let's go spend some more money and file a suit that's really not going to get you anywhere. Um, you know, unfortunately, sometimes you're just not going to get paid on every single account. And that's the way it is. Yeah, I like I think that's another thing that uh, I really was drawn to you and resonated with me when we first met Spin is I think you and I have a very similar style when it comes to working with our clients, which is honesty, transparency, I'm just gonna be upfront with you and tell you what I really think can happen and what I think is going to be your very best path forward on any given situation. And I think that that's something that's so valued, especially, like I said, here in this construction industry. Everyone that I deal with typically in the construction industry is straightforward, we'll tell you like it is, and they want that in their advisors as well. Yeah, I think most business owners want that. And uh, I think that, you know, obviously you're doing a disservice to your clients if you're not being transparent. And, you know, I mean, setting expectations is really key to anything that you do in business, right? Um, and, and I think that that's really something that uh, should be high on your priority list when you're dealing with anybody in business. Um, I, I think one of the big differentiators between me and maybe other people that they might talk about or talk to in the industry is that I, I view myself more of a credit consultant than just a collection agency. Um, I had a call this morning with a company where, you know, they really didn't have a credit policy set up and they really didn't check credit. Um, and so, you know, I have a lot of partners that I deal with, a lot of resources that I can make introductions to that are vetted people, uh, vetted businesses that I, I can refer companies to work with that if I think that it's a good pro product for them or service for them, they can take those recommendations and hopefully help set up um, their credit department. I, I don't want to just be a Band-Aid. I want to be a solution to help them avoid these issues in the first place. And I think that's why we met at Level Set because I truly believe in you know, mechanics liens and using those on the front end to protect you know, contractors and subs and all the folks that are involved in construction projects, so. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Do all of the things to the very best of your ability and then collections becomes, again, like the, the method of last resort and then eventually, honestly, if you have to take it into the court, but yeah, I absolutely love that. One of the things that you taught me actually when, when we met that I really wasn't aware of is that uh, sometimes there are some companies out there maybe flying under the radar that aren't licensed and you actually have to be licensed typically to do collections? Yeah, there's 23 states that require specific collection licensing to either do collections or sell collections within those states. Uh, we're a fully licensed, fully bonded organization. We're also certified by the Commercial Law League of America. There's a commercial collections uh, certification that we go through, um, which means that we're vetted. Uh, they do an audit on our financials. We operate with a trust account. We do all the things that we're required to by law. We actually go above and beyond that. We actually record all of our calls uh, that our collectors make, even though we don't have to. Um, so, you know, it's things like that. Like we want to do what's right for our customer and to protect our customer as well as ourselves. Right. So, I mean, we live in a very litigious society these days, unfortunately, so we need to make sure all of our I's are, are dotted and all of our T's are crossed at, at all times. And especially with collections, because we, we already have a target on our back as being, you know, an industry that people pick on, unfortunately. 
No, that makes a lot of sense. And one thing that you said was you want to protect your clients as well. So um, again, I think you and I are kind of doing something a little bit different in both our industries, which is adding a little bit of advisory and consulting services on top of the regular service that people are normally looking for. And, you know, we're helping coaching people all the time, like how should you actually find an accountant and how can you vet them and make sure that they can do the things that you need and also are prepared to give you advice. So I think, again, it's the same thing. How would you, you know, considering like you have to be licensed in some states, how would you help people vet their collections agencies? If they're just out there looking for the first time, how can they make sure that the person they're dealing with is legit? Yeah, so um, you can look to see there's certain states like Arizona or Nevada that have licensing requirements. Florida is another one. Um, they all have licensing regulation um, organizations. Sometimes it's the banking, sometimes it's the insurance regulations. In Nevada, it's the gaming, uh, gaming uh, board, which is, it was actually a very, very tough license to get. I mean, they pull back the microscope on all of us owners look at every single business that we own. I mean, it is just as bad as getting a casino gaming license. It is very, very serious. Wow. So if, and if you're caught using an unlicensed agency, and this is why it's important, um, they can actually drag, drag your, your company into a lawsuit, right? You can be in trouble for using an unlicensed agency. So I'm very uh, serious about educating my clients, making them aware of that and making sure that they know that it exists. Um, also, the CLLA certification that I talked about, um, it's a very expensive certification, but they come and do the site visits, they come and check out our organization, audit our financials. I think it's very important uh, that you're working with a company that has a trust account as well. Um, you want to make sure that their operating funds are separated from any client funds that they get. So we do that um, not to protect ourselves, but to protect our clients because it's important. Yeah, and you just maybe think of another angle to this as well. Like when you are working with other advisors, I think that um, the, the question that I have there for you is like, how can you help folks like myself, accountants, uh, when they're working with their clients? Like how do you kind of uh, work alongside other advisors and consultants and accountants in that space? Yeah, so I mean, if, if I talk to somebody like you and you say, hey, I've got this client, they really could use some help in their credit department, you know, I'll interview you, I'll interview the client, say, okay, what, what do they have, right? What pieces are they missing? Um, you know, one of the things that, and I'm going to throw a little plug in here because I think it's cool. Uh, we just came out with Credit App Express, which is an online uh, credit application software. Um, it's www.creditappexpress.com. Um, it's, and the reason why we developed this uh, application software is because a lot of smaller to medium sized companies, you know, they're still doing PDFs, they're still doing uh, handwritten credit applications, you know, not only does it, you know, leave things disorganized, but you know, there's a liability there, right? Let's say you have a salesman, he fills out a credit application, and then the, and the credit application sits in his car over the weekend, his car gets broken into, well, now you have that customer's uh, information out there, right? So if you're doing things electronically, digitally through the cloud, you have a lot less risk there. Um, not only that, but we can keep all the credit application information throughout the vetting process in one place. Uh, this software is very, very unique. It actually sends out uh, automated emails to check references, bank references, brings it all back into the dashboard for decisioning, and then it tracks the KPIs as to how long it takes you to actually vet a customer and approve the application. So, um, you know, it's tools and resources like that, that I want to work with these particular customers on, you know, maybe they need some credit reporting. Well, I can tell them, hey, these are the credit bureaus that I recommend, and this is why, or, you know, um, some different services that might be out there to help them with payment portals, or, you know, even uh, I've got a partner that does analytics and will vet your customers on a regular basis and tell you whether you need to raise or lower their, uh, their credit limit. So um, there's just lots of different tools and resources out there that people may not be aware of that I can help turn them on to and, you know, make introductions and, you know, even provide some discounts into some of those products because they meet them through me. That's fantastic. So it sounds like a lot of just sort of collaborative efforts could be done with other accountants in the space too, helping them to help their clients make their credit department even better. Yeah, 100%. I mean, you know, like if you're set up on the front end, you know, hopefully you have less of these issues. Um, you know, one of the things that I always tell my construction clients is, you know, hey, if there's a change order, 
get a signed change order, right? That's that's an issue that we see a lot in collections is there's a dispute because there was a change order. And, you know, if you don't have a signed change order, well, guess what? You may not get paid on that. Yeah. Um, one of the other pieces of advice that I will certainly tell folks in the construction industry is get what I call a job sheet, right? So I want to know who's the owner of the job, who owns the land, what subs are going to be on there? Um, you know, I want to know as much about that particular job from my customer as I can, because that gives you other avenues to pursue if you aren't getting paid. You can go to that GC, you can go to that owner, and you can make sure that, you know, you, they know that you're not getting paid, right? And we can use it on the collection side to help leverage payment as well. Yeah, that's fantastic. And those are often the types of things you'd see on a job sheet in any state where you have a preliminary notice requirement as well, right? So, just having that in practice, whether you have preliminary notice requirements or not, makes a lot of sense. I mean, is there a bond? You know, get the bonding information from the lender. Yeah. Yeah. Always easier to get that information up front um, on the front. So you be, so you're not fighting to get it at the end when you're not getting paid. Yep. Yeah. Very smart. We actually. It's, so again, you and I just are speaking the same language. Yeah. We used to have a smart sheet program like this where we would have our clients send just a little link out and have uh, their GCs or their owners fill in all the information online and it would just be added to a spreadsheet. So every job would have its own job sheet information that the owner or general contractor had filled in because they were just like, here, fill in our job sheet online. It's that simple. So exactly. I love it. Yeah, um, I mean, just make it part of your process, right? Yeah. So. And, and I think that's the thing too, that is really so much what we're about here at the Profit Constructors is when you want to run with the big dogs, you have to create process. If you don't have back office process and if everyone's not on the same page and understanding that, hey, a job sheet's gonna be required on every job, then you're just gonna have chaos in the back office. But if you just have a steady, repeatable, systematic process for every new project, then a lot of things will flow so much more smoothly. Yeah, no, I agree with that. I mean, making sure that everybody on your team is aware of your credit policy and is going to follow the credit policy. I mean, a lot of times you have sales and accounting or credit, they don't necessarily work well together sometimes, where they're, they're supposed to, but they don't always do that, right? So um, sales is always trying to get sales in the door. Credit is always trying to get the credit extended in the best amount of time as they possibly can, but they're also there to protect the company's assets the receivables and making sure that they're making a good educated decision as well when it comes to extending credit. Yeah, absolutely. And and getting both of those departments of your company on the same page is super important. Yeah. Super paramount. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I do want to speak to this as well. You know, a lot of times companies want to rely on their sales department to make collection calls or make help in the collection effort. I mean, I think that's great, but the reality is, is that salespeople are going to be focused on sales. They're not going to be as concerned about collecting that past due account as they should be. And, you know, you can, you can uh, fix that um, by not allowing your commissions to be paid out if you don't get paid. Um, yeah. But some organizations are against that. So just making sure you have buy-in from sales and you guys are working together, but you're not relying on sales to do the job of collections is, I think, paramount as well. Yeah, I think that's a really good point. And I know from all my days when I worked in uh, corporate and was in the accounting and collections department, one of the first things I always did every time I stepped into that role was go and meet all the sales guys, get to know them, take them out to lunch. I, I really wanted to know that I was on their team. Yeah. And so I think that's a good thing that especially company owners can do as well. Encourage that, right? Like encourage that team player mentality. 100%. I mean, you know, you're all on the same team. You've all got the same job, the same goal that you're trying to accomplish. Um, it doesn't have to be combative. Um, I definitely think that that's a great policy to get to know your salespeople, make sure that they know you're there to help them. I mean, credit not only is, is obviously a necessary evil, but it can be used as a tool to grow sales too, right? I mean, if you have a good credit manager in there and they know when to raise a credit limit, and there's other opportunities there, then, you know, it can totally be used as a sales tool to, to grow the revenue uh, of the company. Fantastic point. And on that point, let's go ahead and take a quick break. And then I'd like to bring in and chat with uh, someone who actually does work with C2C, right? They, they do work with C2C resources. They do. Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. All right. So let's take a quick break and we'll be right back.
Welcome back for this final segment today where we are talking about credit and collections. We're here with Sven Nelson of C2C Resources. And we're also now in our third segment joined by um, Marty with Ashgrove Cement. Welcome, Marty. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for being here. So tell us a little bit about Ashgrove and what you guys do. So Ashgrove is a, a subsidiary of CRH, which is based in Ireland. So they are the world's largest. If you would like to share your company or product, product on the Construction Junction, so email hello at theprofitconstructors.com to become a sponsor. And my division is, is in cement production and sales. Okay, and how long have you worked for Ashgrove? I've been with Ashgrove. This is, uh, I just celebrated my 15th year. Oh, fantastic. So you've been around a while and seen quite a few things, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, I've been around a while. Sure. <laughs> uh, I always think that's interesting, like longevity at a place because, uh, you know, you see acquisitions, you see changes in management. And one of the things that I've noticed in that, something that uh, Spin and I were just talking about in the last segment, sometimes that management comes with a very much more sales minded approach to running the business. And sometimes they come with a much more credit management approach to running the business. So it's always interesting to kind of see those back and forth changes and see how the business is being operated at any one time. Um, Marty, how did you and Sven come to work together between your two businesses? Well, I had been out of the credit profession for 20 years and I got dragged back into it a few years ago. And so I leaned heavy on a, my counterpart in Kansas City. And, and I said, I need to get somebody I can outsource some uncollectible accounts, uh, you know, because I have limited resources. And so once it reaches a certain point, it makes sense for me to farm them out. And he said, reach out to Sven, he'll be your guy. Right. So you had a, a reference to Sven from someone. Absolutely. He spoke very highly. That's awesome. And when you guys first started working together, how did you kind of get set up? Was it easy to kind of send your uncollectible accounts over to Sven? Kind of how did that onboarding process go? Oh, there was, you know, given the fact that I worked in credit previously, I sort of know what the bundle to send to him where he's going to be the most successful. So I, you know, we, we slid in together pretty well. He's been very easy for me to work with. Perfect. How does that look from your side, Sven? And, and, you know, it sounds like Marty has a lot of experience, but what if someone's kind of new to the credit game and they're needing to send some stuff over to you? How much do you guys help them kind of figure out what it is that you guys need and how does your onboarding go? Yeah, so onboarding is real easy. Uh, we don't require a contract at all. Uh, we work on contingency on a case-by-case -case basis. So you use us when you need us, you don't when you don't. Um, I don't really want clients to work with us because they have a piece of paper that says they have to. I want them to work, to work with us because they love us and we do a great job. Um, so I, I, I'm very clear with, uh, about that with people. I mean, obviously, if they would like an agreement to put in place. We do have an agreement here we can send over to them or they're welcome to send their own agreement if, they, if they'd like. Um, you know, and we can certainly vet it and see if it works out for us. As far as what you need to send when you turn an account over to collections, uh, I have a, an email that I send over. Um, I copy my assistant, Andre, um, who is actually the lifeblood of my email. <laughs> she does a lot for me. Um, Andre is really amazing. But uh, in the email, I tell them, hey, send us your contracts or, you know, if you have any type of credit application, uh, invoices, statements, and any and all contact details uh, for the customer. If you have any liens filed or any other additional information that you think might be pertinent, please send that over as well. It comes over in an email. Uh, we upload it into our system and we're off and running. Uh, probably the most uh, important thing when somebody turns an account over for collections is once they turn them over to us, if you get contacted by that customer, please refer them back to us. Don't try to have any conversations with them because if they can, they think they can talk to you, they won't talk to us and we'll be back at square one where they're breaking promises, giving you the runaround, that kind of thing. It's kind of like, you know, if you're a kid and you want to go spend the night at so-and-so's house, you ask your dad, hey, can I spend the night at Joey's? And dad says no. Then you go ask your mom. Well, you know, that's that's kind of the setup there. So um, you don't want them playing both ends against the middle. So it's really important that all communication goes through us once you turn an account over. That way they know that we're on a united front and they have to deal with us to get it resolved. That makes a lot of sense. Um, Marty, when you first started working with Sven and you turned over those first 
accounts. How did that go from there? Did you, it sounds like it was pretty satisfactory because you guys are still working together, but was simple and easy. Well, I, I mean, he's banging a, a thousand percent for us. So everything that I turned over, he's, he's turned back to me pretty quick. So he has, he's had a pretty high success rate. That's fantastic. I bet you love to hear that, Spin. Yeah, I do. Um, I also want to point out that in a lot of cases, uh, this doesn't happen all the time, but depending on the leverage that we have uh, with the client, we're actually able to collect our fee as well um, and, and make the client either whole or close to whole, uh, just depending on the rate and the fees that we're able to add. Um, but, you know, the leverage there really has a lot to do with that. You know, do you have a UCC one? Do you have a personal guarantee? Is there any driver, um, you know, like the client wanting to continue doing business with you? All of those things are factors in how we're able to collect the fee and whether or not, you know, we're going to be successful on that. I never want to guarantee that to anybody. I'm very upfront and say, hey, look, we'll try, but I can't guarantee it and don't expect it. Sometimes that fee ends up becoming a negotiating point just to get them to play the uh, pay the principal balance and you know any customer should be happy um, if we're able to just get the principal balance and and sometimes you know it's just a cost of doing business that you have to pay for a collection agency and obviously speak with your accountant about this but um, our fee could be tax deductible so um, I just want to put that out there yeah that makes a lot of sense most uh, business expenses can be um, Marty Along the lines of like how easy these guys are to work with and how, you know, they are getting this stuff back in for you. Um, do you deal with a lot of different people over there at C2C? Do you have like one uh, contact that you're always talking with? How does that go? No, I've, I've generally been referring the, the file to Sven first and then he decides on who the collector is going to be, but they've all been professional. I love that. For, for um, me, the key is communication and, and, you know, my expectation is, you know, if I place a file that I'm going to get a report back on a regular basis where we are, because I've got to report back to my line of or my chain of command. So it's, it's important that I have regular communications and, and, uh, and I receive that from Sven. Yeah, that's fantastic. That was actually where I was going to go next. It's kind of like, how does that process roll and how that that communication is going. Sven, when you guys are sending communications back and forth, do you put like deadlines, timelines on things? Kind of how does that process roll? Yeah. So, I mean, we're going to uh, update a, a new client within seven to 10 business days uh, of placement, typically a call from either myself or someone on my team, whoever their rep is. Uh, you know, sometimes the accounts will stay in my book. Sometimes they'll be assigned to a customer service department just depending on the client size and, and what their business uh, is particularly. Uh, but they get a status report as well at the beginning of every month. It's actually a very detailed status report. Um, it gives percentages and breakdowns based on balances, age of, age of placement, um, all of the different factors that you're going to want included in a status report, as well as just a real generalized idea of where we're at in the collections process and what's, what's going on at that particular time. Yeah. Marty, what is your uh, policy? Like, how do you decide when something has kind of dropped over into uncollectible and needs to go to Sven? So once I get to the 60 day point, it's usually my cutoff. And then when somebody quits communicating with me, then that's usually, I'll, I'll give them, you know, I'll put them on notice. I'm about to release the hounds and then I release my hound. Then <laughs> my hound. Uh, oh my gosh i love that uh here they come baying and all right Spin? that's right that's right man <laughs> once they're off the chain you can't get them back they're just they're right. on the run. they're coming they're, on in the run. they're gonna take <laughs> that's they're gonna chase down the quarry and take them down <laughs> do you you know kind of we've kind of danced around this this whole time but um, are, is there ever a moment uh in this process where you're concerned that by, by, by releasing the hounds, that that might be, you know, a deal breaker for doing business with this client going forward. And is, are you okay with that? No. And I mean, I, I, I said that jokingly, but the, the reality is you want to try to resolve everything in-house that you possibly can. So it's a last resort when you outsource somebody's account. So once you've gotten to that point, then the customers sort of made the decision that they're willing to cross the Rubicon with you. And once they're across the Rubicon, then all bets are off. But I mean, my background is in sales. 
So I, 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 I absolutely am cognizant the importance of preserving every account. You know, and in, in our industry, there are not that many accounts and, and, you know, to divvy up amongst the producers. So you want to do everything you possibly can. And the way that, that, that Sven handles his business, I mean, I think on the back end, it, it, you know, we've left the door open for, for doing business again in most cases. It's a, it's a reality. I mean, it, realistically, you, you're, you're not going to shut somebody off forever and ever. So, I mean, you, you want to try to get it resolved. Um, but we just don't have the time to work every account, you know, for 90, 120 days, 150 days. So, yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense. And I also, um, in my years of actually owning a small business and dealing with this type of thing, I really feel like there's also, like I said, there, maybe there's a smaller number, a smaller pool of clients. And so you have to be cognizant of how that's happening. But at the same time, there is this idea that there are ideal clients and not so ideal clients. And those not so ideal clients, at some point, there does come a point where you're like, maybe we don't really need to do business with them anymore. That's right. Um, which is, as you said, Marty, you come from a background of sales. That's sometimes hard to convince the sales folks of those ideal client parameters. <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I have successfully talk to our sales folks about that, you know, that why chase after some things where we just know it's going to be something that the whole company is going to be consistently banging your head against the wall because we chased after bad business. So it's chased after good business as often as possible. No doubt. No doubt. You know, a lot of these businesses, I mean, everybody wants good paying clients, right? And, but when you have somebody that's not paying you, I mean, they're a liability, they're not an asset. So right. Um, and, and, and I will point out that we try to resolve everything as amicably as possible. It's not like we're getting on the phone and just screaming at these people. Um, you know, you attract a lot more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And so we're trying to uh, actually resolve these things in an amiable manner uh, with our customers, customers. I mean, it is our client's reputation that's out there on the line as well, right? So we have to protect and preserve that too, not just collect the money. So it, you know, it is a difficult task and there's a delicate balance there, but at the, the end of the day, um, you know, we want to let that customer know. And, and, and let me just also say, you know, not all of these customers that aren't paying are bad people. Okay. Most of them are good people in a bad situation and they just need help navigating that. So we want to let them know that, Hey, we want to get this resolved as amicably as possible you know, you can do this two ways. You can do it the easy way or the hard way. You make the choice, but we're letting you know these are the consequences of not resolving it quickly through us. And this is what's going to happen or could happen. And, you know, let's let's try to find an easy common ground so that everybody can go about doing business the right way, get our client paid and, and move on down the road. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And, you know, something that you said earlier too, Marty, kind of I think ties into this. Sometimes it's just that you don't have the bandwidth on your team. So you're just delegating this necessary next step. I have seen instances where it went to collections and the problem was just that they were in between accounting department personnel, right? And so sometimes they're just not even aware of what's going on and just taking it up that next level and giving it to someone that can kind of track some things down and has the bandwidth and ability and capability to do that resolve something quickly and easily and no one's upset at the end of the day just they didn't even know that this was an issue so yeah there's there's all sorts of different situations that plan not necessarily that they're not an ideal customer as well so makes sense um marty if you had something that you know if someone came to you and said hey should we work with sven and c2c um what would you tell them oh, i would say absolutely absolutely great company great guy and um I have absolutely no issue with giving him a, a two thumbs up. <laughs> five stars would highly recommend. There you go. Five stars. <laughs> I, <Come> love on <laughs> Yelp. <laughs> I love that. Uh, you can tell I have teenagers in my house because we have all these little, <laughs> all these little teenagerisms floating around our house these days. Marty, Sven, thank you guys both so much for coming and chatting with us about this. I do think it's something that this industry in particular definitely needs. They need to, awareness uh, that folks like C2C are out there. They need awareness that, you know, you need to vet carefully when you're trying to find something. And then also just to have that understanding of like, what, when is the right time? Like, when is the right time to have collections? Go ahead and step in. I think all of this, those pieces are some really good awareness pieces that hopefully folks can understand better after having listened to our conversation today. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if you're struggling with that and you need some additional help, or maybe you don't have a credit policy, or maybe you have some questions about a particular account and where you're at in the situation, uh, give me a call. I would be glad to talk through the scenario with you or the situation. And the first thing out of my, out of my mouth isn't going to be, hey, let's play some for collections. Um, you know, like I said, I really try to focus on doing what's best for the client, not what's best for me in my pocketbook and my bottom line, right? It's about your bottom line. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely something that we can help you out with no matter where you're at in the situation and uh, would love to do so. Um, I also want to say that if you are considering us for collections or considering me, um, you can go to my website, theguythatgetyoupaid.com, and you can see some more video testimonials from some of my happy clients that I've worked with for many, many years, including one from Marty's boss, Jim Gray, um, who I've worked with for many, many years. He's actually taken with me to several customer or tough, several uh, jobs that he's worked at as credit manager. So that's awesome. I love that when you have a really good team of advisors that you just can take with you everywhere you go. It's fantastic. Well, thank you guys both so much. It's a pleasure to meet both of you. And thanks for being with us today on the Construction Junction podcast. Thank you for having us. It was a great time. And uh, I look forward to seeing the recording. So thank you very much. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Thank you for tuning in to Construction Junction. To find out more about the junction between accounting and construction, please email hello at theprofitconstructors.com.